Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're traveling to the Wild West, to the borderless grasslands of North America. We're going to explore the language of the people who lived here long before Europeans arrived. Ja'at'e and welcome to the Navajo language. I have to admit it, Navajo was so far the most difficult language I researched on because it is so different from anything else. It is spoken in North America, in the southwest of the US, especially in the Navajo Nation, which is a Navajo reservation occupying portions of Arizona, Utah and New Mexico. The number of speakers counts around 170,000 people and it is the most widespread Native American language above the US-Mexican border. How did this language end up where it is today? Let's discuss it in the history section. Studying Native American languages is a little bit tricky. Here is the map of different language families present there. As you can see, there is a huge diversity and languages are so different from each other and under-researched that it is difficult to group together most of them. But with Navajo, however, there is hope. It belongs to the Apache group of languages spread around the southwest United States and form a part of the Athabascan family. With a couple of more languages added to it, it forms a larger, but already sometimes disputed, Nadini family. The name Nadini comes from the common cognates within all the languages of this family. Dini or Dene stands for people and Na is a prefix which means the same thing, so people, people, language group. And by the way, we see this term, Dene, in the name of the Navajo language itself. Navajo people call their language Dine Bizad, translating as people's language. The term Navajo comes from Navajo, which in the Tewa language, which is a language group of Pueblo Native Americans, means a large area of cultivated land. But back to the map. The American continent was the last one to be discovered by humans. There were multiple migration waves and I'm not going to talk about the European migration because that's a completely different story. The earlier migrations happened through the Bering Strait, which used to have a land bridge, with Nadine arriving around 6 to 4000 BC. If we think about it, Native Americans came from Eurasia and their languages could still have some distant relatives that remained there. For example, there has been a research which connects Nadini with Yenisinian languages, which is a small isolated language family in the middle of Siberia, with just a handful of speakers remaining. Some other pieces of research have found correlations between Nadini and Sino-Tibetan languages. Finally, there is even a Sino-Caucasian macro-family theory, which looks at the big picture at the very big picture and claims that there is a distant relationship between Basque, Northern Caucasus languages, Burushaski, Yeniseyan, Sino-Tibetan and Nadini. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Apache branch of Athabascan people migrated to southwest US around 1400 AD. According to the Navajo mythology, their homeland or Dineta, which means among the people, lies between four sacred mountains representing four cardinal points and four colors. This territory seems a bit larger than the current reservation area and I wonder what could have happened. This is a tragic story of a series of conflicts between the Navajos and US Army which resulted in the famous Long Walk, which was a mass deportation of the Navajos from their homeland. In 1868, however, a treaty was signed that granted Navajo a protected reservation territory and they set on a long walk back. Subsequently, years of decline of the Navajo language started. Navajo and some other Native American languages left its mark in the recent history with the code talkers. Because their languages were undocumented and so different from anything else, there was no way to decode the messages. And now it's time to see how this secret language is actually pronounced. Navajo uses the Latin alphabet. Let's try to decipher it step by step, starting with the consonants. There are 32 of them, which are written as a simple letter or a digraph or like this. Yeah, this is a separate letter which stands for the glottal stop. In English, we sometimes make this sound in some exclamations like 
Uh oh. Navajo uses the sound extensively and it can be found anywhere in the world. Most of consonant sounds come in three versions. Non-aspirated, aspirated and glottal. Lastly, one of the most unusual consonant sounds could be this slash L, which is pronounced by putting tongue in the position of pronouncing the normal L and pushing the air from the sides of the mouth. I always thought it was a rare sound, but in my video making experience, I already encountered two languages that had this sound, Zulu and Welsh, and I'm sure that there are more. T slash L will make a t sound, and T slash L glottal will result in almost a kind of a click. Now vowels. Anything you can think of that would complicate your life with vowels is present in Navajo. There are four base vowel sounds that come in a longer version, and all of these can come in the nasalized version. On top of this, there are four tones – high, low, rising and falling. By default, vowels are in a low tone. By adding an acute accent to it, we get a high tone. See the difference between nizad and nizad. Only long vowels can have rising or falling tone. To show it, one of the two vowels is marked by an acute accent. And now just try combining nasalization and tone and glottal stops. That might need some practice to master. Let's hear how the native speakers do it. In terms of pronunciation, at least for me, it's a challenging language. But how about its grammar? Bad news, with the grammar it doesn't get easier at all. Let's begin with the word order. It's SOV, subject, object, verb, everything seems alright. But with the nouns it's not all that straightforward. All the nouns in Navajo are clustered into specific classes depending on their status. And a higher ranking noun just cannot go in a sentence after a lower ranking now. No way. These classes are in the following order. Supernatural beings, humans, large animals that also include children, small animals and inanimate objects. So the girl was pecked by the bird is the correct way of saying, but not the bird pecked the girl. However, the noun is not the main thing, the verb is the king. In Navajo, a verb can form a complete sentence as it transmits almost all the information, including number, of which there are three, singular, plural and dual, person, of which there are four, fourth person is for some abstract or distant objects or people. The verb can also express notions for which in English adjectives are used. For example, there is a verb that means to be large. And loads of nouns are derived from verbs. For example, clock is derived from the word which means it is moved slowly in a circle. And then when we want to conjugate these verbs, there are not really tenses as we know them in English, but there are seven modes, 12 aspects and 10 sub-aspects. Modes show the relation towards what is happening, aspects indicate temporal contexts, and sub-aspects add a secondary temporal context. If that wasn't enough, the meaning of the verb is refined by multiple available prefixes and suffixes. And you could even put 10 prefixes in one word. And if you still want more complications, if you want to give some hay, you would use the verb nilchol. But if you're giving a cigarette, you would use niti. The verb of your choice depends on the shape of the object you're giving. And Navajo distinguishes between 11 shapes. This logic concerns all of the so-called handling verbs like take, throw, fall. And if you're still not lost in all of that already, then let's look at the vocabulary. 
English did not really adopt words from Navajo. But well, Navajo did not really adopt words from English neither. Most of its vocabulary is from Athabascan origins and I know I've spoken of several languages that prefer to create their new words instead of adopting foreign words, for example Latvian or Welsh. But believe me, this is another level. Navajo not only creates their own new words for new technological terms like phones or planes. Here is the map of the United States with state names in Navajo. And a better one. This is a map of Europe with country names in Navajo. I especially like France, mustache people and very poetic. And if you want to introduce yourself in Navajo, you can't just get away by saying your name and surname. You say your name, your mother's clan, your father's clan, your mother's father's clan, and your father's father's clan. Many clans. So the whole introduction sounds like this. If two people have one of these clans in common, they know they're somehow related. And yeah, every person is considered to belong to their mother's clan. So it's a kind of a matriarchy out there, which is interesting. Navajo overall is very interesting and very unusual. One of the most unusual languages I've explored so far. Share your thoughts about this language in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed it and if you love languages as much as I do, consider to subscribe to the channel. Huge thanks to my patrons, it wouldn't be possible without you. I thought it's been a while that Gabi from the clan of Bengals appeared on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.